This is NR2003 Predicts. Using constantly updating ratings, we determine where Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series drivers will place at any given track any given week. Standard disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only using the process of artificial intelligence and should not be used in the process of gambling. So here's how it works. We update drivers' ratings week by week as we go throughout the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series schedule. We run a 100% simulation with normal tire wear and fuel consumption. Qualifying results match what the drivers actually ran in real life. Because qualifying data can't be arranged at the same time as forcing cautions, stages will not be enforced throughout these races. And weather used reflects the real-time data based on the actual start time of the race. Teammates Daniel Suarez and Eric Almirola make up the front row. Green flag flies for the ninth time at Kentucky Speedway. Suarez is able to get off turns one and two pretty easily. Gets in front of his teammate Almirola. But goes to the inside line, and Almirola is going to take advantage of the PJ1 on the outside lines and go right around the 41 car. Almirola going to lead this first lap. We're going to see if the traction compound is going to play an impact in today's race. Deciding who goes in what lane. We see the 77 car here, Justin Haley not in the car. However, Spire Motorsports, they had their big week last week at Daytona after grabbing that first career victory for the team and the driver. Third career cuff start for Haley. This week it's Quinn Hauf in the car. Barn Tricks Jr., the two-time winner at this racetrack, winning the past two races here in the Cup Series. And he's battling a little bit of traffic, didn't have the greatest qualifying spot. Trying to see if he can work his way up on the outside line. But obviously already established here. Kyle Busch has some success here as well. The winner in 2011 and 2015 has only finished outside of the top 10 once racing here and that was in 2016 finishing 12th and you can see he's made his way up toward the front he's gotten around the 41 of Daniel Suarez and he heads to the front spot Brad Keselowski has the most victories at this racetrack in the Cup Series three wins in total in fact there's not too many winners in this field considering there's only been eight races here but they've all been hogged up by four drivers Keselowski, Truex, Bush, and Kenseth and obviously Matt Kenseth not in this race tonight Daniel Suarez, as for his case, he had a great car in qualifying, but he is on the cut line for the playoffs. He is underneath Ryan Newman, who's a little bit further back there in the picture. There he is, trying to work his way up through some traffic himself. For Suarez, this is a good opportunity to get some stage points. Try to work his way back toward getting within the playoffs and get Stuart Haas racing all four of their cars into the postseason. Eric Jones, one of those drivers that's also trying to make up points. He's in 18th place, and he has not grabbed a victory yet so far this season after winning Daytona last year. This is a very tedious situation for several drivers as they work around the cut line. Clint Boyer has found his share of failures in the past few weeks, and he is just trying to stay afloat. Right now, you can see he is not doing too well himself. Currently running mid-pack, and he only has one top 10 in his career at this racetrack. We're seeing a bit of a breakaway here. Kyle Busch and Joey Logano, along with Kurt Busch, a little lagging back, are getting away from this field. A mechanical problem for Ross Chastain. You can see the whole field blow right by him as he goes to the high side, trying to make sure that he doesn't cut in front of anybody, and he'll head to pit lane for an unexpected pit stop and will lose a lap on that deal. Ryan Blaney, the lone Penske driver that's yet to win this season. He is trying to put himself up into contention. A season ago, he was the runner-up to Martin Trex Jr. in the 2018 race. So he is trying to see if he can find himself back to a better position this year. Jimmy Johnson also trying to see what he can do at this racetrack. He's one of just a few drivers that have cracked over 100 laps led. Five in total have done that. Jimmy leading 206 laps in total and trying to see if he can get back to some winning form. Obviously, Hendrick Motorsports has gotten two victories this season. William Byron, not one of those drivers that has gotten a victory, but he is doing fairly well this race as he's been close to the top five and trying to see what he can do to get 
himself some points to ensure that he'll be in the playoffs this season. Joey Logano making a move to the outside of some slower traffic. Going to use the pick of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to get around Kyle Busch. We got to give a little bit of a shout out to some of the great results from drivers that don't normally finish too far up front. Corey LaJoy being one of those sixth place for him in that rain shortened event. Matt Tift getting ninth place. Both of those career best finishes as they crack the top 10 for the first time. Obviously, neither of them are running too well today, but good to point out how well they finished in that race last week. Kurt Busch was one of the non-beneficiaries of the results after he had come down the pit lane, and then the lightning struck. Some bad circumstances there. Now trying to see if he can just go on and recover. Joey Logano going to be the first one to come down the pit lane. Pits from the lead, and Kyle Busch will come down a few laps later. He'll stretch it out just a little bit further. And problems on pit lane. Alex Bowman, the Chicagoland winner, going to make contact with Chris Buescher on pit lane. He's going to miss his stall, and he's going to stall out as he's on pit lane. So that is going to be several laps lost for Alex Bowman, but he will return to the racetrack. Joey Logano, slight advantage over Kyle Busch, but they'll probably trade the lead a few more times throughout this race. Some good runs right now for David Reagan and Ty Dillon. We're riding on board the 13 car as he tries to catch up to Reagan. Just a spot behind them. Kyle Larson trying to work his way up toward the front of the field. He has gotten himself into a safe position in the playoffs just looking for some insurance, but he's not a great driver at this racetrack. In five starts, he averages a 21st place finish, so he is trying to get some decent runs. Meanwhile, for Daniel Suarez, he is in no man's land. The pole sitter has not had a good pit stop, and it looks like the car is just not handling the way he wants it to anymore as he runs out nowhere in contention for position. On the topic of drivers that are struggling, Austin Dillon, Richard Childress racing as a whole, obviously Daniel Hemrick a rookie, but Dillon a veteran. Six starts here, he has never cracked the top 10, and he is going to have to get some better performances if he wants to make the playoffs because he is currently outside of the top 20. Meanwhile, the winner of the past two events here, Martin Trex Jr., trying to work his way up through some traffic. He has gotten into fifth place, and we've seen up, up here near the front of the field, but obviously nowhere close to the actual leaders. Denny Hamlin, we haven't mentioned his name yet, and he has a few top tens here, three in total. Not one of the best drivers at this racetrack, though. We've also got Kevin Harvick here, who's trying to put SHR in victory lane for the first time this season. He's one of four drivers in total that have gotten at least six top tens racing at this racetrack. One of three in the field as Kenseth has not entered. Now he's trying to chase himself into the top ten. Looking at Brad Keselowski now, we mentioned that Keselowski the only three-time winner at this racetrack. And he is caught back in a little bit of traffic. He is not making his way up as fast as he'd like to. Going to see what he can do throughout the rest of this race. About halfway done almost. Kyle Busch has caught up to the back of Daniel Suarez. Hasn't quite put him a lap down yet, but definitely going to be fighting to put him down. Suarez obviously ill-handling. But look at Joey Logano going to try to take the outside line with Suarez and try to make a move for the lead, and it looks like it's going to work out. And We mentioned Traction Compound is playing a factor into this race as they are utilizing both lanes to make passes. Just a matter of where the car handles best. A blow-up situation on Matt Tift. After a great Daytona finish, he's going to grenade and have a wild ride through the front stretch. Fortunately, though, he will get it back on the racetrack without much more damage than the fact that he is pretty much done for the day with that smoke coming out of his race car. We would not go to caution, though. And on that lap, Joey Logano and Daniel Suarez come down the pit lane. Maybe they're anticipating a caution, trying to see if they can just jump on a pit lane real quick. Kyle Busch would come down a little bit later. He's going to get held up a little bit as Quinn Houth, who they, who he'd caught up to, is going to come down at the exact same time. A couple seconds might be lost from that, and Ryan Newman will be the last one to come down. And yes, indeed, Joey Logano has put several seconds on Kyle Busch, who still runs in the second position. See part of the field running here. Clint Boyer still trying to make his way up. He is within the top. 10 at the moment. And he is working his way up and trying to see what he can do to gain some points. Make sure he stays 
within the playoff cut line. There's Ryan Newman. He's a little bit further back from this group. Still staying within earshot. Some of those guys are doing behind him. Eric Jones, he's in a solid position at the moment as he leads that pack. Has a real opportunity to gain some points. Daniel Suarez struggling. Going to try to keep Clint Boyer behind him. Chase Elliott, one of the Hendrick drivers that have won. He's not having one of the greatest days as we haven't mentioned him yet. And he is just trying to stay within earshot of the rest of these drivers. And we see Kyle Busch has kind of faded back to his brother Kurt Busch who runs in the third position. But now going to make a move for second. Trying to take the outside line with Ross Chastain. And he's going to be able to make that pass. So a great move by Kurt Busch trying to put Chip Ganassi Racing in victory lane for the first time excluding the All-Star race. Daniel Hemrick has kind of lost the pack, and he is now in the same situation as Suarez, as Logano still tries to work around both these guys. Hasn't been able to pass Suarez yet, but there's going to be a caution for debris on the racetrack. So that is going to erase the huge lead that Logano had on Kyle Busch, and Hemrick and Suarez will maintain their lead lap spot as well. So that's a big break for those drivers. Meanwhile, we go back to the restart, and Logano is going to lead them after they take pit stops. But Kyle Busch is going to take the outside line on that restart lap, and he is going to find himself up to the front once again, and Dan uh, Denny Hamlin, his teammate's going to try to draft him there. Meanwhile, we see Suarez. He's still trapped in the back. Obviously, even though they got that caution, didn't get off a of pit lane any faster than anyone else, and... That car is still struggling despite the speed that it had in qualifying. It's going to be a real struggle for him to get back up toward the front. Here we got Paul Menard as he is working his way within the top 10. He's never earned a top 10 at this racetrack, but obviously as he runs 20th in standings, pretty much in a difficult position to gain on points. He's going to want to try to contend for the victory, although that might be hard at this point. As we see another breakaway, this time with five cars. Bush, Hamlin, Kurt Bush, Logano, and Larson. They have all started to break away from the rest of the field. Meanwhile, Martin Trix Jr. is slipping a little bit as he has fallen out of the top 10. You can see the top 10 on the leaderboard, and he is not within it. He is pretty far back from some of those drivers. Also falling back, Suarez once again along with Clint Boyer. Both guys that cannot afford to lose spots, and they are tailing on the end of the lead lap. Eventually, they're going to be caught by the leaders, but it looks like Lugano has lost the breakaway pack. And with this new arrow package we're drafting, is just a little bit more in effect. He is not going to be able to catch up to those guys. He's going to fade back into the next pack. Meanwhile, here comes Ryan Blaney. He's made a decent recovery. He was kind of mid-pack earlier in the race and now trying to be within the top 10. There's that pack once again and Kurt Busch making a move to the outside. Trying to see what he can do to get to the lead. And he's working that outside line and getting to the front. So we're just seeing what these guys can do in terms of moves and Denny Hamlin's made his way back to the front and there's Suarez. He's about to go a lap down at this point. And it looks like Hamlin's going to make the move right here or going down the front stretch. And there is almost no competition for Suarez. He's just going to get blown by. We see Kyle Larson trying to take an outside lane as they're in lap traffic all over the place. Three wide going down the back stretch. Larson on the high outside. And he is going to make the power move. Running that outside line. Taking advantage of the traction compound. And he heads to the lead. Getting around all the other guys. See, Logano has kind of blended back into the next pack. Alex Bowman, who's obviously a few laps down with his pit lane problems. Now just trying to stay in front of his teammates. One of them being his actual teammate, his pseudo teammate in Paul Menard. Here comes Kyle Larson. He's going to come down and take what should be the final pit stop of the night. Kevin Harvick will be the last one to come down. And as they cycle out in full... It will be Larson in front of Hamlin and Kyle Busch. Kurt Busch has kind of lost the pack as Logano did earlier, and he is going to have to settle back into the next pack as he is 
ha he has little chance of catching back up. There you can see Kurt as he still runs in the fourth position trying to get draft off other drivers. But he has fallen out of contention for the lead at this point. However, there might be an opportunity. Kyle Larson coming off a of turn four tangles with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. while he is leading. That creates that situation and it's going to allow the other drivers to get around it. But more importantly, Kyle Larson has damage. And that is going to affect his race car huge, huge implications for Larson in terms of getting those extra points and getting that victory that Chip Ganassi Racing needed. And you can see that was all on Stenhouse right there. He came up and kind of blocked Larson on the lane when he didn't even have a block on him. But we see here comes the restart. Kyle Busch is able to lead this one now. Denny Hamlin behind and Larson has no speed coming off the restart. He did not go for a pit stop and he restarted third and he is not going to be able to keep this pack from separating. As you can see, huge, huge gaps between some of our front runners. Denny Hamlin trying to track down Bush for the lead. Kurt Bush has kind of gotten in, into the conversation once again. And there you can see Larson. He has dropped to the end of the lead lap. And he's just going to limp it home for what could be at least the top 20 finish. White flag is out at Kentucky. Kyle Busch, a two-time winner at this racetrack. Denny Hamlin never won at this racetrack yet. They are going to battle it out to the finish line. But Kyle Busch has the advantage, and he has a lapped car in front of him. He's going to go to the inside. Hamlin's going to follow, so he's not going to take the other lane. That might be more preferential. And that is going to seal the deal for Kyle Busch. Coming into this race, he had four victories. He's going to be the first driver this season to go for five. Checkered flag at Kentucky Speedway. Five victories on the season. Three victories at this racetrack. Kyle Busch a winner yet again. And continuing the, dem the dominance of Joe Gibbs Racing and Penske. Despite the fact that Hendrick has stuck in there a couple times. And obviously Spire Motorsports has gotten their own victory. Busch, Hamlin, Kurt Busch, Keselowski and Harvick make up the top five. Ryan Newman... An essential top 10 run along with Eric Jones. Looking back a few spots, we see that Hendrick Motorsports has a pretty mediocre day with Byron, Johnson, and Elliott all within the top 20 only. Alex Bowman obviously had his problems. Kyle Larson, the last car on the lead lap. Daniel Suarez, the pole sitter, ends up in 20th place. Going back even further, you see Clint Boyer. He had his problems today. Not the run that he wanted. His car fell off, and he ends up in 21st position. It's going to be in a little bit of a tricky situation on playoffs, and Alex Bowman ends up in 35th place, five laps down because of his pit lane incident, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who got involved in that accident, he ends up in 34th place. That is it for this edition of NR Chaz and Marie Predicts. We hope you enjoyed tonight's race, and we will see you all next time.